All right, so what I'll do in this video is work through a typical related rates problem. So a related rates problem is whenever what you want to calculate is the rate of change of a quantity, say A, but what you know or you're given in the problem is the rate of change of a different quantity B. So what you want to do is write down a relation between the two quantities, differentiate your relation, so then you can relate the rate of change of A to the rate of change of B. All right, so here's a typical problem. Suppose that a plane flies horizontally at an altitude of 5 km and passes directly over a tracking telescope underground. When the angle of elevation is pi over 3, the telescope measures that the angle is decreasing at a rate of pi over 6 rad per minute. Now, how fast is the plane traveling at the time of measurement? All right, so let me try to do a little demonstration. So here's my plane. It's not really a plane, but it kind of looks like a plane. And this is my tracking telescope. So the plane here is flying horizontally. Now, at some point, it goes straight up above the telescope. And then my te telescope is tracking it, so as the plane is moving away, the angle of elevation of the telescope decreases. Right, so it starts like this and it decreases. Now that's an interesting question because that's exactly what the telescope would measure. So what the telescope would measure if it's trying to measure the velocity of, this, uh, of the plane is not the velocity of the plane itself, but the rate of change of the angle of elevation here. So you want to use this knowledge of the rate of change of the angle to be able to calculate or deduce what is the horizontal velocity of your plane. Okay, so whenever you have a related race problem or problem solving in general, a good idea is to start by trying to sketch a graph of the problem and then assign symbols to the quantities you're interested in. Okay, so let me try to draw a little plane here. So here we have our little wonderful plane, something like this, and it's flying horizontally at a certain velocity. And we have our, well, we have the ground here, and our tracking telescope here looks like this, and it's somehow tracking the plane here. All right, so what are the quantities that we know? Well, first, what we know, uh, what we are, what we measure is the angle of elevation here. So I'm gonna give it a name, I'll call it theta. So this is the angle that the telescope makes with the ground when it's tracking the plane. That's one thing we know. Another thing we know is the height here of the plane because we're assuming the plane is traveling horizontally. So the height is given to be five kilometers and it will remain constant because the motion is horizontal. And the other thing here that we don't know but we are interested in here is the position of the plane here. So I'm gonna call it that, call that x, which is a function of time. So the position is of course increasing. What I'm interested in is calculating the rate of change of position in uh, the horizontal position. So what I want to calculate in, in, in calculus terms is dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to time. But what I do measure is not dx dt, but d theta dt, namely the rate of change of the angle with respect to time. So I want to be able to relate the two and use the knowledge of d theta dt to calculate the x dt. Okay, so let's first write down a relation between x and theta. So looking at a picture here, what I, what I see is that just from standard trig, trig uh, definitions that the tan of the angle theta will be equal to the height over the horizontal position x. Right. Now I could replace h here by 5 km, but I'll keep it as h just because it's going to be faster to write down. But I have to remember that h is a constant while x and theta are both functions of time. Okay, so from here, I could also rewrite this as saying that x is equal to h over tan theta or h times cotan of theta. So this is the relation between my two quantities, the horizontal position and the angle of elevation of the plane. Now what I'm interested in is the rate of change, so I'll want to take the derivative of this equation. But this is easy, so I take the derivative with respect to time on both sides of the equation, so the left-hand side, I get dx dt. This is the rate of change of position. This is what I'm trying to calculate. On the right-hand side, remember, h is a constant, so I can pull it out. And then I get dt, d dt of cotan theta. Theta here is not a constant. It's a function of time. The angle is changing. So what I get here, so derivative of cotan theta will give me a minus cosecant square theta times d theta dt by the chain rule. Remember, theta is a function of time, so I need to use the chain rule. All right, so this is almost my final relation between the two rates of change. I have dx dt is equal to minus h 
cosecant squared theta d theta d t d t. Okay, and now the problem is telling me that uh, when the angle is pi over three, I am measuring a rate of change of pi over six rad per minute. So I want to substitute that in here to be able to calculate dx dt at that particular time. So this is at theta equals pi over three. What do I have? I have that dx dt is equal to minus, so now I'm gonna replace h by its value, which is five kilometers, times cosecant square of my angle, which is pi over three, times the rate of change of theta. So this is given as being pi over six, but this is uh, 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 the angle is decreasing here. So the rate of change should be negative, right? Because it's decreasing. So that should be minus pi over six rad per minute. All right, almost done. So I just need to calculate what cosecant square of pi over three is. Well, uh, this is, so I'm, I can rewrite that. Cosecant square really is just one over sine square of pi over three times minus pi over six rad per minute. So what do I get? Well, you have to remember that sine, if you don't remember it, you can check this, but sine of pi over three is equal to square root of three over two follows from the unit circle, if you look at the definition of sine in the unit circle. So I could replace that here, so sine squared will be 3 over 4, I get minus 5, now the rad here disappear. In fact, I could also cancel the sine, so let me cancel the 2 minus sine, I'll get 5 over sine squared here will give me 3 over 4 times pi over 6 kilometers Per minute, which gives me my final answer if I simplify this. So here I have a, well that would be 20 pi over 18 kilometer per minute, which is really just 10 pi over 9 kilometer per minute. And that would be the final answer. So this is the actual velocity, horizontal velocity of the plane, when the tracking telescope makes an angle of pi over 3. Okay, so you see what I did here. So what I did is calculate dx dt from the knowledge of the rate of change of the angle, and this is really a typical calculation that we do when we do related rates problem. Okay, so let me just summarize the strategy for related rates problems. So whenever you're faced with a problem, this is a step-by-step -step strategy. Uh, I, I recommend that you follow it. So you first, of course, read the problem very carefully because it's not always obvious what you're trying to calculate and what you know. Then you draw a picture, a little diagram, and assign symbols, introduce notations, and assign symbols to all quantities that are functions of time. So in the problems that we did, there was a position x and the angle theta. Then what you want to do is express given information and the desired rate in terms of derivative. So what this really means is that in this case, what we're interested in was dx dt, and what we knew was d theta dt. And then you write down an equation that relates the quantities. That was my equation, uh, tan theta is equal to h over x. Differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time. And then finally, substitute the given information into the new equation to solve for the desired rate. So this was the last step when I replaced theta by pi over three, and the rate of change by minus pi over six. So we'll do more problems like that in class, so hopefully that will become very familiar after next week.